Sin. Welcome to the very first episode of Center Freaks. I am not Sam Clements. Uh, I, on the other hand, am Sam Clements. Um, who, who are you? You are JD. I am. I'm JD, also known as Jonathan Davis, also known. As, well, I've answered to worse. Let me put it that way. We are very happy that you're along for our very first show. So, Sam, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I am not JD. As uh, No, we did cover that, didn't we? No, I, so I'm Sam Clements. Uh, I'm on Twitter on at Samuel underscore Clements. Yes, I'm one of those people that has a really long Twitter handle with an underscore in it. Apparently that's a no-go. They didn't tell me that when I created my account, so um, you'll have to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, so I do uh, I do Wi-Fi stuff and I live in Tennessee. Um, so I'm a, a CCIA wireless, a CWNE, and um, uh, what do they say? I'm a, a prolific contributor to the industry is that what is that what that is phrased is that all right yeah that's 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 a really nice way of saying it yeah. i've attended uh, mobility field day sessions uh wireless field day sessions tech field day extra sessions i blog over at uh sc-wifi.com that's uh that's sc as in samuel clements dash wifi.com and that's where i ramble all right well i am not sam clements uh i am jonathan davis as i said i am at Subnetwork on Twitter. Don't ask me how I got that one, but I did. Uh, I'm also at, uh, or excuse me, subnetwork.me for the blog. Uh, I have been in wireless for about, I guess, 10, 11 years now, something along those lines. Uh, I don't have all the cool certifications that, that Sam does, but I'm slowly working on them. Got a few of them. Yep. Uh, and uh, also a Mobility Field Day Delegate, one of the places Sam and I uh, got to know each other at um, and, uh, attend, uh, every year we make a point, both of us making a point of attending WLPC. So we will be there soon and we'll talk about that more shortly. So let's talk about the show a little bit. This is the very first one. So you guys need to know what to expect. Um, we primarily are going to be here on this YouTube channel. Um, I know a lot of people like to listen, uh, on commutes, uh, prefer audio only, uh, but one of the things that Sam and I have really committed to with this show is making this as educational as possible. And that's often going to mean sharing our screens with you. Uh, so you will need to be able to see what we're doing, whether we're working in um, uh, Ekahow or, or one of the, the utilities that we use on a regular basis. Um, that is, uh, that's going to be a large portion of the show. And for that reason, you will be able to find our content here. Sometime in the near future, uh, in the in the far future, rather, we may get to a point where we also distribute uh, in some normal podcast uh, means, whether audio, audio and video. But for right now, we're going to try to keep it easy and keep it right here. Uh, with that said, uh, we've got a few uh, segment types, and and I should also mention that we will see you'll see full shows like this this one here, uh, but you may also see short segments uh, that get posted from time to time. Maybe it's uh, when I've become too opinionated and and can't hold something in, or maybe when Sam has got some light encouragement for um, you know. <laughs> I don't know whatever you're talking about. Light uh, encouragement, I like that. So we will have we will have full segments. We'll also have some single shorts uh, from time to time, and uh, sometimes it's going to be both of us, and sometimes it's going to be one of us ranting or encouraging. Um, Sam, why don't you talk about some of the segments? Um, you know, we put a lot of thought into into the sort of the types of things that we want to do, um, and so you know we were talking about uh, you know different sort of um, types of shows that we can build that that we think are would you know, sort of last the test of time uh, that, that that seem like things that we could you know revisit on a regular basis, and I think that one of my um, more favorite types of show segments that we talked about is um, simply doing design review, um, site survey reviews. I'd I'd love to be able to see. Um, JD and I talk about um, people doing design, and not 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 bashing people and saying you know oh this design looks terrible, but but maybe more along the lines of hey send us your design, send us your site survey, send us your ESS files, and let us open them up on the air and comment about what we think you're trying to do or what we think you maybe should have done differently or um, or just you know let's talk about designs and and I think that learning from you know listening to to people talk about um, 
putting themselves in the shoes of the person who was doing the design, um, I, th I think can be quite enlightening. Um, I think that it's, uh, that it's a worthwhile exercise for us to take and look at um, what other people are doing and maybe step down for a sec, stop down for a second and say, you know, what was this person trying to accomplish here? And why did they pick this AP, this location, this antenna, this power level, this design requirement? And so if you find yourself interested in, in wanting to punt a design at us, um, just contact us by way of Twitter or on the YouTube channel and I'm be more than happy to uh, to to consume your uh, design files absolutely so in in this particular case we've got mr. Sam over here who is a Echo Hell master at this point also teaches ECSE correct I do I do yeah yeah and I am an ECSE and maybe one day would like to teach it but uh, so between the two of us, we've seen quite a few wireless surveys. And uh, if you guys don't know it, Sam knows a thing or two about Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. it would be a great uh, learning experience, I think, not just for the – and I think this is the strength of this segment is it's not going to be just a learning segment for the person who sends the the, the survey file in or, or the you know, the – uh, who ask the questions, right? It's also going to be a learning segment for other people who haven't had an opportunity to take the ES ECSE yet, who um, are just beginning to understand. Um, and then sometimes, in some cases, we're going to run into some situations that we all leave our, you know, leave us ourselves scratching our heads a little bit. And uh, it's something that even well-seasoned professionals can learn from. And those are, uh, you know, so that's what we kind of hope to do here. Um, and so it, it's a great opportunity to kind of, you know, check our pride, uh, because we all have things to learn and, uh, would love to see, would love, to, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, both of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. Send us, send us those files, S send us the ones that have your, your head scratching, or maybe just something that, um, you, uh, something you struggled with and you can even send us along. Here's, here's how I decided to fix it, or here's, you know, how I decided to approach the problem. So send those over to us. Sure. And I think, you know, I think from my perspective, I'd love to see if you're doing, you know, uh, designs from a, for a Greenfield network, if you're assessing an existing design, if you're looking for, man, I just rolled into this place and I just took a look at what was here, you know, I'd say send, send it to us all. And it doesn't have to be one that you did. It could be a design that somebody else did that you went through and passively validated or, you know, whatever. I'd say, I'd say, you know, let's figure out if there's a, if there's a, a good cadence for us to get into on that front. And, then, Absolutely. and you had other segments you wanted to talk about. Yeah. And I will, I'll, before I do that, I do want to back up and I do one thing on that is, is ensure that if you send it to us, yes. we can use it. We can use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if we, if we record a segment and, and, or record a, and, and throw it into a whole show and upload it and then find out uh, a short time later that, oh, we, you know, we can't actually use that segment because uh, those files weren't approved to be, to be released. We, we it's, it, we're going to have a problem. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so 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 don't don't send us blueprints of Disneyland where you've gathered all of their sensitive information and 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 want us to you know, share it with the world. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so moving on. So the the other thing, and it's going to be kind of in that same idea, is uh, you're we're going to talk about your comments and your. Uh, as, as we're going to call it, the, the comments from the peanut gallery, uh, but also also lessons. Maybe it's uh, maybe you have a lesson that you learned um, that you feel like the greater community can can uh, appreciate and take something from. We also want you to send those to us, and we'll also talk about that. Um, we firmly believe in sharing and 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 kind of leaving our pride at the door a little bit here, I will definitely be telling stories that of, of stupid things I've done or things that I wish I had not done. And, uh, and you know, for you the, both. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly for, you know, for the betterment of the community, uh, and especially to help those who, uh, might make that same mistake, uh, keep them from doing it. What do you got next, Sam? Oh, um, I think next on my list was uh, uh, educational and insightful segments, but I, I certainly wouldn't want to gloss over the possibility of having a guest or two um, throughout the uh, throughout the duration of the show. Um, certainly, I would love to have the opportunity to invite people on to come talk about whatever it is that's top of mind. I think that dovetails nicely with what you're saying. If you've got lessons learned or things that Absolutely. you want to talk about and you don't have a blogging platform or you don't have a show or you don't want to deal with all of that, I think we'd love to love to have people just come on and talk. Absolutely. With that, I actually want to take just a second and tell everyone about our first show sponsor. 
Hey, freaks. I'm super excited to be telling you about our very first show sponsorship. I get it. You're asking yourself, why should you care? But in this particular case, I think you will. This sponsorship happens to be for giveaways. So over the next three episodes, we'll be giving away three link sprinters, one per episode. And also, to make things even more exciting, an AirCheck G2. Now, I know you're asking yourself, what do you have to do to win these devices? Um, and we will definitely talk about that more at the end of the episode. Uh, what I did want to do for, for just a second, though, is number one, thank NetScout for contributing these devices to be given away. Um, I also wanted to talk for just a second about the last time that NetScout sat down in front of Sam and I and kind of the outcome of that. Uh, at Mobility Field Day 3, NetScout presented for uh, the second time I've seen them present. And they talked a lot about the, the AirCheck G2 version 3 software. Um, they, all, they talked about the Link Live Cloud updates. And then they also talked about the updates to uh, the Link, instead of the Link Sprinter, the Link Runner. Um, and the thing that really struck me was the fact that NetScout is really doing a good job right now of listening to their customers and uh, trying to take the requests that, and, and demands they're getting from their customers and actually put those in, in the product uh, as updates. And they're doing a really good job with that. I was, I was struck by that and Sam was struck by that. Uh, and, and in fact, we both wrote blog posts about it. In the show notes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link to uh, two things. Uh, number one, both blog posts, but also what I'm gonna do is link over to the Mobility Field Day 3 event page for the NetScout presentation so that you can watch the sessions yourself and you can decide whether or not you feel like NetScout's doing what's best for the customer. I certainly do. So those will be linked below. Take, take a look at them. And now I'm gonna to toss it back to the show and we'll, we'll get back to what do you have to do to win these devices shortly. All right, Sam, what you got? Um, well, I mean, we have a, we have, um, a couple of things that we have from our notes that we were, we thought were interesting to talk about. Um, and I wasn't quite sure, um, if there was anything in particular, I know that, um, we have obviously WLPC coming up. We have, uh, the train, the trainer, the echo train, the trainer that occurred last week. Some people may not have seen that occur on Twitter. That was sort of a, sort of a private thing. Um, but I think that that's important to at least acknowledge is that the, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, there, there, there's training that goes on for trainers, and I think that it's a, it's an important part of the community to sort of step back and acknowledge that um, this isn't just, you know, a training efforts for any particular product or organization. There's obviously a lot of community strength and support built around um, around how we enable not just ourselves but our peers. And as it turns out, that was over in Little Rock, Arkansas at a um, small little facility uh, called Titan Ranch. And if you're not familiar with Titan Ranch, it's uh, owned by GT Hill, and that is uh, help me out here at GT Hill on Twitter. I think I do believe it is. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Um, and that is a uh, Titan II missile silo, one of eighteen, I think, in Arkansas. Only two of which have been opened up, and so there's another sixteen Titan II missile silos that are still buried underground. Um, GT opened his up, and he has turned it into a training facility. So. Um, I think that the intention is for that to be an, a unique destination for uh, for training, um, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of you know working 50 feet underground. No, no that's not right. Uh, I'm a big fan of Titans and missiles and and you know rockets and things along those lines in general. It just so happens that um, the facility is down underground, you know, in the facility where they actually did the launch control for the Titan missile. That's you know just on the other would have been just on the other side of the. Uh, of the facility. So I know there's a bunch of comments about uh, people getting ready to do other training there and things along those lines. If you find yourself able to go to sit a class that happens to be hosted at Titan Ranch, um, you should do that. You should really, really do that. It's a, it's a unique experience. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous. I would like to see that. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, uh, GT has a YouTube channel um, that uh, where he kind of uh, shows number one opening the the um, what it took to open up the silo the first uh, first time uh, there's a kind of interesting scene there when they finally get the door open uh, I think GT almost died something along those lines but uh, that the I'll put a link in the show notes the the YouTube channel there is death wears bunny slippers which is just it's just fun to say 
So uh, it's worth checking it out. Is. It is. I agree 100%. Yeah. So WLPC, uh, you are going to be speaking and I'm going to be speaking. What's what's the name of your topic? Mm, I think the name of my topic is It Depends, and I have still not written the presentation for it. Got to add that to the to to to, to the to do list. Um, I uh, yeah yeah I, I sort of threw it out as a topic, and you know as a, as Keith is want to point out, um, you know those are topics chosen by attendees, and so um, it it was one of those things that I threw out and thought if people want to hear me wax philosophically about the it depends topic, then I would gladly do so. And shoot, that's coming up, isn't it? <laughs> it is coming. It's coming up. It's 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 uh, what three weeks and some change? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And what, so, what are you going to be talking about? Well, so I am. I my the, my topic is antenna systems where good RF goes to die. And just to give you an idea, uh, I'm using some of this book and some of this book which are both fairly large books. And, and this one in particular is, um, uh, you know, it's a college book where, I mean, it just jumps right into just like the really, just the ugly stuff. Um, and I'm, and the fun part is I'm, I'm learning a whole lot and, and there's a lot of interesting things that I would like to cover, but I've got 10 minutes. So, uh, covering, there won't be too much of this <laughs> covered, but so that's honestly the hardest part really is figuring out what I need to, what, what I can pare down, right? Uh, and, and that's one of the fun things about WLPC is the, are those 10 talks and getting a whole lot of information really quickly, uh, but it has to be usable. So I'm working really hard to try to get there. Um, so my presentation is most definitely not done yet either, but I'm, uh, I'm working on it and, and having a good time doing it. So let's talk about a couple of tweets that you found, and I think there's some interesting points to be had here. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so I think this falls under the uh, the comments from the peanut gallery, or at least, you know, my interpretation of that, which is, you know, I, when I when I sort of look back on the week, I think it's interesting because we all sort of get inundated with Twitter. And uh, and I think somebody coined the term Twitter bankruptcy some time ago where you where you go away for a, for, you know, a couple of days and you come back and you're like, there's no way I can read everything that happened. And so. Um, I like to sort of take a look back and see if there was any highlights or any common themes throughout the week that I could uh, that I could bring up. And and as it turns out, it didn't take me long to come up with one. And the first tweet uh, is from um, Paul Caps, and that's uh, at P A U L K A P S. At least I believe it's it's Paul Caps. That, that's uh, that's how I interpret it. And uh, and he tweets at Denver Airport Wi-Fi strong in a terminal. And Paul is, uh, uh, and he posts a speed test picture of 130 megabits per second. And he's chief uh, editor in chief of Mobile Sports Report, so he's he's more on the on the consumer side of of Wi-Fi technologies. But you know, nevertheless, um, you know, Denver Airport certainly something that's near and dear to our heart. Obviously, um, um, you know, obviously run by uh, by Jim Palmer there. And then the second tweet that I highlighted was from um, from Ian, who is at. Uh, K Nerdian, that would be C A N E R D I A N, and he comments on, and it appears that he is commenting on my home airport there. For if I see the screenshot correctly, uh, he says, "Oh, Boingo, this might not be uh, this might as well be a checklist for how not to do airport Wi-Fi: 40 megahertz channels, overlapping channels, overloaded APs, captive portal, rate limiting, too much 2.4 gigahertz. About the only thing they did right was use Uni 2." And so it was just intriguing to me that, um, and he of course posts a picture of uh, of Insider Pro that has some channel plan breakdown and AP names, which is why I see it's BNA Airport. And you know the the interesting thing was that you know sort of in fairly short order, I saw two interesting tweets specific to you know large Wi-Fi networks, one being Denver Airport, one being Nashville Airport. Um, and you know the interesting thing is I travel obviously out of Nashville quite a bit. Is that you know captive portal aside, actually there for a little bit, um, they were actually running hotspot 2.0, so there was actually no captive portal. Um, is that in the situation when they were running hotspot 2.0, as a user, I never once had an issue. 
And so it's interesting to say, it's interesting to see that there's sort of a technical perspective on, you know, things that you shouldn't do right. You know, there's sort of this hit list of, you know, don't do X, Y, Z. And my personal experience in the facility has always been reasonably positive, again, captive portal issues aside. And then you juxtapose that against somebody like Paul Caps, who who isn't necessarily in the Wi-Fi industry per se. And all he cares about is just jumping on and going. Obviously, Denver has, um, you know, no captive portal um, there. Uh, it's 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 all the bad stuff you could want to get as fast as you can possibly get it, and um, and it's just interesting to see sort of two perspectives on airport Wi-Fi, you know, land so so closely back to back in in the Twitterverse, and and that was my comment on that. I think also uh, we're going back just a little bit um, from our good buddy there, uh, Rick Murphy. So he posted on October 9th, he posted um, a blog post on FutureFi, on the road to 8 11 2020 and beyond. And then shortly after that, he posted um, in October 16th, uh, basically chapter three. So the, so the chapter two and chapter three, I think, were the two that, that had a bunch of meat to them. I mean, I think that was where you were headed with that. There was a couple of things, and, and, and really the reason that this came back to mind was he posted even uh, chapter four, more recently, that was posted uh, January 3rd. So this is something that he's continued to update up, up, uh, and continue to expound upon. And he, and he really kind of talks a lot about, all right, what happens? So we, we've been talking about AX for a while, you know, pre-standard, what's coming with AX. Uh, and he starts looking at, okay, well, what, what, what happens after AX, right? Because AX doesn't necessarily arrive and just fix all of our problems. And Wi-Fi gets easy, right? We're still going to be in a situation where uh, we don't have enough. Uh, we don't have enough spectrum. There's still situations where we don't have, um, uh, you know, that there's there's going to be even larger requirements. There's still airspace contention, things along those lines. And so he kind of starts, you know, looking at well, what's what is the plan, and and where's IEEE? Uh, you know, where are they heading? What are they looking at to do? Uh, and also talks about um, six gigahertz uh, expansion as well, which uh, for those going to WLPC, uh, Chuck um, Lezikowski, is that right? Lukacheski. Luke Lukacheski. That's it. Lukacheski from so Aruba. Try saying UC's last name. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, from from Aruba will be uh, speaking. And when you see when we when we get a finalized schedule, if you're if you're at WLPC and we get a finalized schedule, and when whenever he's speaking, make certain you block that off on your calendar. Don't take another phone call. Don't step out into the to the lobby. Um, uh, Chuck is one of the best speakers. Like I love listening to Chuck talk. Anyways, I mean he he's always going to go technical. Uh, it's always going to be really informative, but he's going to be talking about the, the, the what's what's happened and, and um, the process that they have gone through, and, and he's worked on that on a lot of that process uh, to uh, submit to the FCC uh, this this document or, or these th- this process that they've gone through with the FCC to see if it's it, we can open up the six gigahertz space to wireless, right? And it's it's a really interesting process. Um, I think it, it's going to be highly informative for those who, who haven't heard him talk. Um, and that also gets discussed here. And and Sam, while you and I were talking about this earlier, you made a really an, an interesting comment. And I'll set it up. And, and this this is this is how I'll set it up. Right now, when we when we look at Wi-Fi, we we know we have the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and we have the 5 gigahertz spectrum. And the the problem, one of the problems that we deal with, one of the biggest problems that we deal with, is the fact that um, uh, 802.11 prime, 802.11a, and 802.11b were all ratified in 1999, right? And every standard since then that has built on those or expanded on 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 the capabilities of Wi-Fi has had to be backwards compatible with with those um, uh, with those uh, standards. The so so we know that we lose um, uh, airtime to contention um, with those older devices, right? Um, but also too to to um, things like. Um, Beacons and management frame uh, yeah, overhead. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right. All, all of the, all of these 
you know, CTS to self, all of these things that, that we do to ensure that we can cohabitate this space with these older standard devices and newer standard devices. Well, we don't currently have a wireless standard in six gigahertz, right? And and nothing that is A, B, G, N capable, A, C capable, will be able to make that transition to six gigahertz. So when we look at six gigahertz, it is greenfield from a wireless perspective. So we hopefully, we're, there's going to be some avoidance in there, uh, much like um, uh, radar avoidance in, you know, in, in uh, some of the five gigahertz band. Um, and, and Chuck will get it heavily into that. And we won't go into that right now. But aside from that, from a client perspective, we're only going to be looking at clients that are six gigahertz compatible, which are going to be at least AX and, and possibly even uh, BE uh, clients, right? And so there won't be that requirement for backwards compatibility. So then that set up your comment, Sam, and I want you to, to give the comment and then defend it. Yeah. So 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 my comment was well, if you if you think that through to its logical conclusion, then this 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 is the sounding bell for basically Wi-Fi being dead. Um, and and it really um, when you take a look at what what, what the current trajectory is for. Um, AX and BE in particular. So if you go to chapter three of, of the wireless training solutions blog, um, they're, they're trying to work very rapidly to include six gigahertz as an AX optional feature. Um, so that so that we have some some something to operate in six gigahertz when and if that gets opened up, but when you look at the BE, the current list of BE mandatory standards being six gigahertz, um, what I don't wonder or what I wonder is that. Um, once we can move back into frequency locking some of these ratifications, how much longer is it before we collectively pull our heads out of our rears and say, you know what, this new band is awesome for the the today's latest and greatest Wi-Fi? How many networks have we deployed over the past, uh, you know, let's call it two years, three years, where we've been able to wholesale disable 2.4 gigahertz? And that's simply because we had 802.11n that was dual frequency, and then we had 802.11ac that was locked in 5 gigahertz. That, that, that only took us one generation of having a ratified standard that says 5 gigahertz only. We were able to go back and start saying, you know what, you, you people who operate your networks, maybe you can sort of slough off some of these older compatibility standards by simply disabling those frequencies. And so assuming BE carries forward with 6 gigahertz only and then maybe what comes after that, if we can maintain two or three generations of ratifications that are locked into frequencies that we're not using today, um, I see a 5, 10, 15 year vision where we're looking back going, oh, you know what? That legacy 2.4 gigahertz stuff is just like way off in Never Never Land. But that, that now legacy 5 gigahertz stuff, maybe we have a, enough proliferation of enough clients that are it's living BE compatible or, you know, what would that be? Wi Fi 7. Um, compatible, where we say, you know what, Wi-Fi 7 being the, I'm getting the numbers right, right? Wi-Fi 6 is yes. AX. Yeah, Wi-Fi mm -hmm. 7 would, would then in theory be BE, maybe, hopefully, depending on what the Wi-Fi line says. Uh, you know, well, by the time we get to Wi-Fi 7 and maybe even Wi-Fi 8, you know, we're talking 5 to 10 years out. Maybe we look back and we go, you know what, maybe it's time for us to, to stop supporting those legacy features. And then Wi-Fi networks, as we know them today, um, or as, as we would know them, um, looking back on today's deployments, meaning deployments done, you know, circa 2019, uh, we're going to look at those and we're going to laugh at ourselves and say, you know, gosh, do you remember when we were deploying radios that were, that were two frequency radios? And now we've got three frequencies, and man, you know what? This other third frequency, the six gigahertz stuff, is super clean. Why would we ever go back to that? Uh, you know, at some point we're going to have to slough off that backwards compatibility, and I and I wonder if BE as a ratification or as an amendment, excuse me, is is not the place that we hope that that occurs. Um, I would think that if we, if AX was frequency locked to five gigahertz. Um, you would be hearing from a lot of people making access points that simply didn't support 2.4 gigahertz anymore. Um, I, I predict that, I postulate that should AX have been, had not been supported officially in 2.4 gigahertz, we would see those radios go away. Um, and it's the legacy IoT compatibility that, that's ultimately carrying it forward. 
But I do think you bring up a really valid point there. There's so there's so one of the things that uh, I think it's 64 channels total in the six gigahertz sp- spectrum, right? So if we suddenly and that's 20, but that's assuming a 20 megahertz channel, right? Um, but when we start looking forward, we we see 160 megahertz channel widths and even mm-hmm. 320 megahertz channel mm-hmm. widths, right? Optionally, yes. Yeah. S- right. So that so suddenly there's not as many channels there as as, as we think. But the a point you just uh, brought up is actually really valid. If we look at you know Cisco, Aruba, whoever, uh, an access point manufacturer. Putting a radio in there, or putting um, putting radios in there to support 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz, right? Those those are going to be different antenna requirements, right? Because creating an antenna that's that's resonant on two, four, five, and six, uh, you know, equally is going to be nearly impossible. I mean, the the, the physics there just simply, uh, you know, begin Hard to fight data. you, yeah, yeah. right? So now we're talking about different antenna lugs, right? And if we already look at um, what we're seeing uh, coming out of AX, you know, we're an, an eight lug uh, access point or an, an access point with eight antenna lugs is uh, expected at this point, right? Some of us, in fact, talking about things we see on Twitter this past week, I happened to see an antenna manufacturer who was showing off an antenna that it certainly looked like it had eight, eight leads, right? So if we start thinking about eight leads needed for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz in AX, and then we try to cram six gigahertz in there. That's going to need a di- that, that's going to have a different antenna requirement. How many? How many lugs? How many? You know, R, whether it's RPTNC, SMA, uh, RPTNC, RPSMA, or or N type lugs, can we put on one? Right. Well, and you and you look at the reason for those multiple transmitters, right? You look at the reason for multiple antenna elements is to achieve uh, uh, multiple transmit receives, which is the byproduct of that is spatial streams. You look at the BE specification; well, the optional features is up to sixteen spatial streams. Right, right, and and so you so that that becomes a that becomes a, uh, a compounding issue rapidly. Yeah, exactly. So I could I could. I'm going to actually support you in saying I could absolutely see us come to a place where it's five gigahertz radios and a six gigahertz radio, and there isn't a 2.4 gigahertz radio at all because the 2.4 requirement, whether it's for whether it's an antenna per perspective um, or space to space and design, you know, wh- whatever that is, is too costly from a uh, engineering and support perspective to move it forward when there's not enough clients to support for that. So we might be in a situation where you have to cover an area with a 2.4 access point, right? And also with the five slash six gig ac- access points. So there's some, there's, it, it's going to be interesting. We're, we're, we think AX is, uh, you know, it seems like for a long time people have been making AX out to be, you know, this is never going to happen. Well, it's ne- it's yeah. never going to happen. Gonna, it's yeah, no too, too, too big a challenge. You know, too big a challenge. It's, uh, you know, uh, it changes everything. But I think AX is going to be pretty easy when we look back from BE and we look back from 6 year hertz. I think the transition to AX, most pe- most of us are going to look back and go, eh, uh, that wasn't yeah. too bad. <laughs> no. No, well, and it's interesting, you know, you hear, you hear, you know, road shows, you know, talking about doing real world AX deployments and, you know, nonsense like that. And when we still have, what, one shipping access point today and practically speaking, no clients. So, you know, we're, we're literally on the cusp of seeing um, gear land. And when it lands, it's going to be a lot of people making a lot of announcements back to back. I, th- I would say that, you know, here in the tail end of January, beginning to middle of February, we're probably going to have a 30 month window where, or 30, oh, geez, 30 day window, not a 30 month window. Uh, you know, we're probably going to have a 30 day window where our industry has just turned on its head. Where we're all just sitting back, going, "Yeah, you know, lack of clients means I don't have to worry about it or, or whatever." Uh, that's that's not the case. That's not the case. You, you, we're gonna have to go up to speed real quick. Yeah, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you actually posted, I believe, on Twitter this week talking about Twitter, um, where and, and I saw the same article where Intel has announced in their new chipset that it will have. Uh, AX compatibility, so that's that's going to be built directly into the Intel chipset, 
So out of the box, there's going to be a whole lot of devices very quickly that are going to be AX compatible. Yeah, for sure. And there was a, there was even, um, so, you know, leaked information, you know, you always have to take it for what it's worth. Right. But, um, in that same tweet, um, I linked to the, uh, Samsung S10, uh, leaked features as well as to, oh, it was somebody else that had built, um, oh, it was HP has actually announced a laptop, um, that specifically calls out in its specification Wi-Fi 6. And so, you know, the, the interesting thing about that is that, um, you know, people have been saying for, oh, when we see AX clients, they're not going to be fully baked. They're not going to be fully ratified. They're going to only support a subset of features. They're going to be limited, this and that and the other. All of the quote-unquote leaks that we've seen so far are call out Wi-Fi alliances, Wi-Fi 6 certified, meaning meaning whatever, whatever the Wi-Fi alliance says it qualifies as a Wi-Fi six client is going to be what's going to be available, um, and we're seeing we're we're expecting that stuff to land with a quickness. And so, uh, you know, if you're an Apple versus Android guy, um, you know that's 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 um, you know something you can dig your teeth into or not. Who was first to market with an AX client? But you better believe that if Samsung ships a Wi-Fi six radio in their S ten, what we're expecting that next month that Apple will do it at the end of the year. And so suddenly by the end of calendar year 2019, you have two mainstream devices, mobile devices, plus laptops, plus all sorts of other components that should have been shipping in volume by the time the year runs out. Yeah, you're, you're, I think that's the key. By the, end, by the time of the uh, end of the year hits, uh, we've got, you know, between now and then, we know there's going to be a new, new MacBook or a couple of them, right, from Apple. We know uh, we're going to have a whole lot of new devices out, especially right before, you know, uh, before the holidays, right? There'll be a lot of stuff that gets shipped. And you're exactly right. If Samsung and Apple both have AX compatible mobile devices, um, that's, I mean, what is that? That's got to be 85 to 90% of the clients that we see um, in most networks, right? It does not, not, you know, not taking into account maybe hospitals or, heavily industrial networks where, you know, it's a lot of ring scanners and things along those lines. But for the average carpeted office space, for example, there's there's suddenly a whole bunch of AX compatible clients. Well, and even then you talk about, you know, consumers driving IT purchases, right? You talk even in healthcare, um, I think that you see a lot of applications coming to mobile devices that have their license frequency radios turned off. I mean, I've seen, you know, I was in the hospital at the beginning of the year, not me visiting, and um, and the, uh, the staff had um, what appeared to be iPhones that were running their patient care app on their Wi-Fi network. And so you look at even the adoption in a healthcare environment of these of these consumer grade devices that happen to quote unquote perform really well on Wi-Fi networks. Um, you're going to see them in healthcare. You're going to see them all over the place. In addition to just BYOD um, uh, concerns, you're going to have full on patient care impact concerns, um, and that's that's a big deal. Well, it's interesting you say that because one of the things I've seen, I've seen rumors um, for a couple of different places is a new iPod Touch. And I had a conversation with someone this past week about it. And their their question was, what good is an iPod, iPod Touch? Anyone who's going to buy an iPod Touch is just as likely to have an iPhone. But that's actually a great, that's a great use case where there are plenty of you know, places in uh, in industry, right, where that iPod Touch is the perfect thing, because now it can only connect it to uh, the Wi-Fi network. You don't have to worry about data getting leaked over cellular or anything along those lines, and so you have full control of that data. Uh, yeah, so if, if those rumors ring out, and, you know, you would expect that to also come out around the same time as new iPhones, or, or at least be built, you know, on, on they're always built on similar technology, right? Um, that, that could, that could potentially be another AX compatible device that would be, as you say, perfect for, for healthcare. Um, so that's, uh, that, that certainly, I, I think we're definitely at that place where you're absolutely right. We're going to see a whole bunch of announcements very quickly, but by the end of the year, uh, I think we could definitely see a, a pretty decent number of AX clients, uh, actually on, operating on, on our networks. <laughs> All right. So the only thing we have left to talk about is the giveaway. 
I don't know if any of you might be excited about that, but we have a link spinner to give away this week. Um, and I don't know, uh, Sam, do you have, do you have a link sprinter? I do. I do. I, uh, I, I use it as often as I can. Yeah, I absolutely. There. Yeah. I love mine. It was one of those things where when I saw it, I was like, yeah, but I can get the majority of that information through the switch or through, you know, whatever. And then, and then I used it and the, and the email arrived from, from link live and it was all there. And I was like, Ooh, that's, that's kind of easy. Yeah. Suddenly um, have a record of that port working. It's a, it exactly. a real powerful thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially in my day, I, I don't know how you, how it is for you, but my day, I often go from, you know, one site we've got, we have, I think 96 sites, you know, uh, across, uh, uh, across the municipality. So I can literally go from one site to the next site to the next site working on different things. And sometimes it's, I know this is where it's going to get plugged in. And so I, I go ahead and check it, verify it end to end. And I also now have CDP or LLDP so that whenever I get back to my desk, that evening or even the, the next day, I have a record of that port and I, I know what I need, you know, which port I need to configure on which switch. And I don't even have to think about it. So I really enjoy my link, link sprinter. We will be giving one of those away. So let's talk about what you guys have to do. What what hoops are we going to make them jump through, mm, Sam? Mm. Well, <laughs> I, I, think, I think the easy hoop is, uh, is, is, you know, follow us on Twitter if you're not already. Uh, that yeah, ought to be absolutely. a chip shot for most people, I would think. Yeah, I think so. So. Uh, we, we gave it to you earlier. I'll go ahead and put it over on, uh, overlay it on the video, you know, so follow Sam. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right. Yes. Uh, follow Sam, follow me, but more importantly, uh, follow center freaks. Uh, we do have an account and we will be posting each time we upload a video. Uh, go ahead and tag us and also take tag net scout, uh, at net scout and tell us why you should be, uh, the, the winner of the first link spinner that we're giving away here. Um, also, right below, while you're while you're watching this video, it's real easy to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to, you can even hit the bell so you'll get updates each time that we upload a new video. But uh, be sure to subscribe. And below also, um, leave a comment uh, with what you would like to see us uh, do in the show, whether it's a segment, uh, that, a reoccurring segment that you would love to see, or maybe just a one-time thing, discussion that you would like us to talk about. So those are your four steps. Follow us on Twitter. Tweet to us and, and tell us uh, what why you should be the one to win the link sprinter. Subscribe to the channel below and leave a comment uh, letting us know what you would like to see. Do those four things. It'll take you no time at all. And, and we'll be picking a, a winner for uh, that link sprinter. I will say the one caveat, should probably start in with this, but the one caveat is, is we do need the winner to be in the U.S. Sorry for, for those of you who aren't. Uh, however, if you're coming to WLPC, you're most definitely in, still in the, the running. We can we can certainly bring that to you. So what about that, Sam? I think it's fantastic. Four easy steps, and uh, and uh, we're gonna what try and do one one oh one a week. Yeah, we've got a uh, we've got yep yep. So we have the beginning there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I know people are excited about that. I want to show you something, Sam. Actually, this this came. I don't have one of these. And everyone is really lucky that I uh, that only three of these were shipped, or that um, I don't know that I oh, that I'm, that I'm choosing packs. to do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I've yeah. never seen the belt pack. That's cool. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 looks like an older <laughs> one. I think that I don't think yeah. that said Net Scout. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's can, right. you, can you blur, that's can you blur right. that out? Oh yeah, so absolutely. Th- this, absolutely. This does. This does. This has got the right color on it. Yes. 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 Well, so somehow I've missed that these things existed, and uh, so I will also say that two of the three link sprinters will come with a pouch. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, they will all well, come with a pouch, and a little test cord is in there as well. But you know, here, here's the thing about the link sprinters is we as installers, as Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna just gonna say my piece because I can. Um, you know, we have we have made the leap from you know cable test. You know, you, you get the cablers go out and they install. They give you a piece of paper, the cable test, and we make the leap from cable test to hanging the AP without any intermediary step. That's what I use mine for. Is that piece in between the cable test and hanging the AP. Right, is this gives you basically the validation that all that stuff is good to go and the the easy to use belt clip, right? Just clip it onto your belt, walk it around with you, 
plug it into the port where you're going to plug the AP in. It gives you a thumbs up diagnostics that yes, you should be good to go when you plug this into the right port on the AP. Um, so that's that's what I use mine for. It's like it's that it's that last sanity check before I plug this AP in and then move on to the next one and then the next one and the next one. And before I know it, I'm 10 APs down the road and the guy's calling me going, hey, AP number 30 didn't come online. It's like, ah, oh, I got to go back and it gets rid of those. Right, it, it it completely takes care of all of those path issue validation stuff. So, um, you know, that's that's my spin. And one of the great tricks that I, I'm surprised at how many people I've talked to that don't know this is if you if you set up Link Live and you get the email right uh, with each test result, you can actually reply back to that email and it will add a note. Right. So in your in your situation, for example, you can literally. At hang the access point, reply back to the email with the name of the access point or, or, or what, you know, some, some indicator of which one it is so that later on, if they come to you and they say AP 31, you just go back and through your notes to, and find AP 31, right? Not, uh, which port did AP 31 get plugged into? I don't remember, right? It's all there. Um, I, I, I agree with you. Um, one of the things I use them for a lot, um, not not in my day job in some some other experiences I've had where I don't have access to the switches I don't have that you know I'm, I'm not doing I'm not responsible for any of that work right I've done some some survey and design work and then I'm in there just you know making certain everything gets gets hung and, and uh, working I've ran into situations where either the switch is out of power right it, it's uh, it's the the power budget has been exhausted or uh, maybe the switch doesn't even have PoE capability, you know, for a small, you know, like a small compact switch or something along those lines that, you know, they've run this back and, and no one actually checked to see. So that's one of the great, th you know, one of the other uh, things that where that saved my butt a couple of times where I've, I've you know, connected up, test it. And, I, and, you know, because it lights up on the front, I clearly see this thing does, is not providing PoE power. And I can immediately go time out. Why don't ha we have PoE and we solve all that problem rather than them coming back and going, oh, well, we, we've got a we've got a wireless problem in this area. So anyways, we're, we're definitely ranting. Obviously, Sam and I are fans of the uh, of the link sprinters. They're great little devices and, and we're excited to be giving a few away. All right. Well, I think with that, we are going to call show number one. Hope you guys enjoyed the ride. We will be back soon with show number two. Eventually, maybe. You tell us whether whether we should we should do it or not, uh, and we hope that uh, we haven't wasted your time. That this has been useful and you've learned something. And um, definitely check out those links in, at at the bottom. Like I said, we'll be linking to the articles uh, that we talked about regarding sixty gigahertz and 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 post AX uh, and and quite a few other things to look at there. So so go get check those out, and don't forget to subscribe and tweet to us and all those things so you can be entered to win that link sprint. Have a great week. Bye.